we have been getting all of our supplies together in preparation for a disaster. Fill the car with gas, take out some extra cash from the bank, maybe enough to last a day or two, hit the grocery store if you like, avoid travel, and keep candles and a flashlight around just in case. This state has done more than virtually any other state, and, and this country has done more than most of the other countries, and we are as prepared as you can possibly be. Armageddon, you know, it's the worst that could happen. December 31st, 1999, a New Year fear we can laugh at now, but had the entire world on edge at the time. Most computers only understood years as two digits. 1999 was 99, and 2000 would be 00. Some thought computers would think that was 1900, and everything from power and water systems to banking and medical equipment would crash. As the big day crept closer, massive money was shoveled into a huge nationwide project to keep everything running. Experts like a sociology professor and banker that Kumi Tucker spoke with urge people to prepare just in case, but stay calm. I think they should do the same thing that they do if a winter storm is coming. They should be prepared for the power to go out a little bit. So the first thing they should know is where they can shut off the water in their homes so that if the power does go off, their pipes won't freeze and burst. They should probably have flashlights with batteries. Dr. Lockman also suggests having a little bit of cash on hand for emergencies. The banking industry insists it's ready for Y2K and that all systems are go. We're very concerned that uh, people would really get anxious, get worried about Y2K and withdraw all their money from the bank and bury in the backyard or some other crazy thing put on their mattress. A couple in Florida withdrew their life savings put it in a bucket, buried the money under a doghouse. Guess what? Someone took it. Quite frankly, the bank is the safest place for your money. We're guaranteed, uh, insured by the FDIC. This is the place for your money to be, not somewhere where somebody's going to be able to take it away from you. An Ohio couple quit their jobs, sold everything, and built a straw house. They're prepared to live without electricity or running water. Well, the New York power pool has run some tests, and officials say they don't expect anything more than a few minor outages. And experts predict there will be some computer problems or glitches, just as there are every day. What does all that mean to the average person? Don't panic. Uh, take the normal amount of money that you do every weekend out. It's not going to be a big deal. Relax and enjoy their New Year's Eve. Kumi Tucker, News Channel 13 Today. Meanwhile, the Red Cross encouraged people to have some basic necessities on hand. If you knew it was going to storm tonight and there was a potential for the power to go out, what would you do? You'd make sure that you had enough food for a few days. You'd make sure that your gas tank, you know, had some gas in it, that you had some money. People took the advice. Flashlights, batteries, sleeping bags were flying off the shelves at this Walmart. You've got to be prepared for everything. Plus, I just recently moved out to the outskirts and... You never know when you're going to lose your power and better be ready now. I have candles, I have a flashlight, and today I went to press chopper and got some batteries, so I'm all set. They're unsure of what's to be. Another popular item, generators. But consumers were warned not to expect a full refund if they didn't need them after all. Many stores now have a policy in place that says if you buy a generator and return it after January 1st, you forfeit 20% of the cost, but that's not stopping people from buying them. Hospitals took stock of every machine and pump. Albany Med determined about 100 of their 7,000 medical machines needed replacement. They also spent millions of dollars upgrading the business end of things. Instead of seeking to repair our current clinical systems and other uh, business systems, that we instead replace those systems and thereby not only become Y2K compliant, but move to the next generation of technologies. It's something that affects all the hospitals in our area, not just Albany Medical Center. Ellis Hospital in Schenectady is also working on a comprehensive program to be ready for the year 2000. Gulf America, Echo Alpha with Gulf America, and your call again, please. 
A ham radio network was even set up in Schenectady County over fears that normal modes of communication would just simply not work. If you live in Schenectady County, you'll see signs like this popping up between now and New Year's. They'll give you the locations of ham radio operators who can help you out if you have an emergency and your phone line is dead. New York State turned an old Cold War bunker into a state-of-the-art Y2K headquarters. It was 40 feet underground with concrete walls three and a half feet thick. A large group of government officials from at least 20 state agencies would help keep the bunker staffed 24 hours a day from December 30th to the first few days of January. We don't anticipate any disruptions for Y2K, but we've been uh, working hard on the project for over three years, bringing all of our systems into compliance. Then there was this. A man named Bunker Bob went on a nationwide tour to find the perfect spot for his Y2K trailer, fully stocked with a bedroom, bathroom, and kitchenette. Here he is on a stop at the Empire State Plaza in Albany. As the big day approached, Niagara Mohawk, the precursor to National Grid, was ready. They had more than a thousand people working, ten times the normal New Year's. Their spokesperson reminded people someone somewhere would probably lose power, but don't blame Y2K. A tree limb comes down on a wire, uh, someone goes off the road and runs into a pole and knocks the wires down, an animal gets into a substation. But it's, it's, none of this has anything to do with Y2K considerations. Then, the moment of truth. People at the SEMO bunker in Albany and those around the world watched with bated breath. Three, two, one. Happy 2000. The new year was finally here, and the world seemed to still be intact, at least for the most part. Here's Antoinette Biordi. Across New York State, everything is Y2K okay and uneventful, especially at the State Emergency Management Office in Albany. All day and night, more than 150 workers from 20 agencies were monitoring Y2K problems. But lucky for them, nothing major happened. The total cost for the state's Y2K project, $272 million. Pataki says the money spent was well worth it. We were hoping for the most expensive non-event in history. Uh, that would be good news, and it was a non-event, and uh, uh, we're just delighted that we didn't have any of the problems that could have impacted uh, the quality of lives for the people of this state. Emergency officials say there were some minor disruptions, but none of which are being blamed on the Y2K bug. 1,500 customers were without power for two hours, one report of a computer glitch at a bank, and no disruptions in phone service. Governor Pataki says advanced technology allowed them to be better equipped for any Y2K emergency that came their way. Officials were able to track down any power outage in less than an hour. During the ice storm, it took three days. Inevitably, there will be some natural disaster, whether it's an ice storm or a fire somewhere in the future. We will be better prepared. So uh, we're very proud of uh, what this team did to get us through last night. But more importantly, we're proud of how well prepared we are to meet the needs of the 21st century. Officials say they don't expect any major problems on Monday when businesses reopen. Antoinette Biordi, News Channel 13. However, a colony video store ran into problems that gave employees and customers a good laugh. As of today, if you had a late tape, it would be $91,000 recharge. Well, that's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it on my account. The computers at Super Video on Central Avenue began charging customers for videos as if they were returned 100 years late. You owe $99 in this oh. case. So. In that case, I want the movie. <laughs> and the customers have been uh, taking it all in stride and stuff, so it's real easy to tell what's a correct charge and what isn't on this, obviously. So uh, we're just having some fun busting customers a little bit with it. However, the owner joked he wished the late fees were real. If I can just get one customer, though, to pay off that kind of thing, I'm golden for the day. Of course, I haven't called the bank yet either. I know what my balance is. Bottom line, the new year came, we all survived. But it did come with a price tag. A 2019 NBC News report looking back at that time found the total cost of all the upgrades was more than $100 billion. To see more past news events from the Capital Region and how we covered them here at News Channel 13, head to our News Channel 13 YouTube page and click on News Vault. For now, opening News Vault 13, I'm Rachel T.